Georgia by eight. Good luck and have fun. Hello, hello, I am eight. This is the Lion King for the Sega Genesis. This game is considered to be one of the most difficult 2D platformers of the 90s. A similar game of the same name was also released on Super Nintendo, but there are some differences between them. The Genesis version is considered to be the most difficult of the two, largely because this version can sometimes not pull your inputs at random, which means that if you miss a jump, it might not always be your fault. Shout out to Colin, aka EasyGame69, for that information. He made a task for this game with Tompa, and they've discovered lots of odd things that we've been discussing lately. And you might have seen me run this game on Summer Games Done Quick, but I ran a different category there. That was difficult percent. If you're expecting something wild like that, I'm sorry to let you down, but we're having fun this time. You're about to see Easy Percent, which fundamentally changes the run for a few reasons. On difficult, I started with zero lives. Here, I will start with eight. The first few bosses also take one hit to die instead of three now, too. And I'm also just generally a lot more relaxed in general because there's zero potential to fully game over and have to restart the whole game. And <laughs> moving right along, last time I didn't do any shout outs at all. So this time I wanted to mention a few people who have been vital parts of my journey up to this point. Roxaloxa, Mo, Serpico, Lanx, Nicole, Takate, Tuchan, Bobby, Zaxon, Kajink, Sarvets, No Good. You are all so important to me individually and I adore each and every one of you. Thank you for being there for me from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for hyping me up and holding me down. Aki, working with you the past few weeks has been hands down my favorite experience in speedrunning. And I had to say this part last because, well, you probably know why. Thank you for everything, I mean it. You are the best and I'm more grateful for you than you know. You might now though. In case I forget to mention this at the end, this event is for a great cause. The COVID crisis has given young students no choice but to learn from a distance. And the Malala Fund is providing things like radio programs and digital curriculum to students in Pakistan, Lebanon, and Nigeria. If you can afford to donate, please consider it. It's never been more important than right now. That being said, I will be showcasing mostly safer marathon strats in this run. I can't say safe because nothing in this run is safe, but these are safe comparatively for sure. I'm not trying to PB here. I might throw a couple surprise strats in, depends how I'm feeling when I get there. And I'm also removing my earbud after I count myself down, so I won't be hearing anything except my inputs until the run is over. I'm not ignoring donations, I'm not ignoring them. Anyway, uh, let's get right into it. With me again is my personal favorite commentator in speedrunning, Nicole Goodnight. This is our 10th marathon doing each other's commentary, which is wild to me. She's a top runner of the Super Nintendo version of this game and has also been an amazing host of Fleet Fatales this week. What is up, Nicole? I'm so happy you're here with me again. Oh, Aid, <laughs> thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. Like Aid said, I am Nicole Goodnight and I run this game for the SNES. It is an absolute honor to be commentating for her run here at Fleet Fatales. So nice. All right, um, I can count myself down in three, two, one, go. All right, everyone, The Lion King was released in 1994, pretty much directly alongside the corresponding movie, and things pertaining to the swiftness of the release will come up later in the run. It is a precise platformer full of clips, tricks, and glitches. So already she has done three things that you wouldn't have even realized that she did that are part of this run. She did a clip under a iguana, she did a damage boost up through a rock, and then she just did a pixel precise jump to get that health bug. Usually you have to go all the way around, it takes a lot of time, but when she does it this way she can get it fairly quickly and here too she jumps to the right side of the uh, hyena pit and that way he comes out a little bit quicker meaning that this level is already over 
So then we're on to level two, and this is kind of the first instance we see of the game being rushed. This game was added in to be a hard puzzle that ensured the game wasn't beaten in just one rental period. Not only are there multiple precise inputs, but there's also a part that can completely softlock the game during the ostrich auto-scroller. Happens twice, so there's two potentials to softlock there. Um, this, this level's really, really fun, and a lot of people got stuck there as a kid because there's just a lot of different things that go into it. For example, I know a lot of people got stuck at this part. You wouldn't know whether to go up, down. What did up, up even mean? I had no idea as a kid. Um, but of course, it means double jump. This pattern never, ever changes, and coming up, she's going to be doing something called the hippo jump. Hippo jump is a precise set of inputs that allows her to immediately hop right onto this hippo's little ear so she can get up as quickly as possible, having to skip completely doing the part where she has to swing on the tails, and we're on to the second part of the auto-scroller. So coming up is it going to be another section where she has to do some precise movement. She's going to be roaring at monkeys, falling in certain places, jumping on logs, and all of them have to be done very, very precisely. Again, this game is full of things that you would not realize are part of the speedrun, but absolutely are. For example, every single time she's gone down a giraffe's head, she's held right. The reason for that is, if you don't, you'll roll down the giraffe's head as opposed to kind of just flouncing gently off of it. And that does save time. And so here you're going to see her roar at that monkey, and again with that too, if you are too far to the left, it will not turn and you will have to do it over again. This wastes about mm, a second to a second and a half. Coming up is going to be the same thing, you're going to see her roar and then immediately fall. And then she's going to hop across, which is very precise as well. As a kid, I know I fell in that pool a whole lot. She's just going to there and hopping over again, coming up to another part where she has to roar yet again and then fall very precisely onto a platform. The thing about Simba, if he falls and if you miss where you're landing, you lose about one and a half seconds from splatting. So she makes it look super easy and super, super like intentional. It's not, it's not as easy as it seems. So she gets right back up there and roars and we are already out of level two almost. And again, at the end of here, she's gonna be holding right again. And that is of course, to make sure she doesn't roll down the trap. Which brings us to level three, which personally is one of my favorite levels in the whole speed run. Um, it has a shortcut, it has difficult jump heights with vultures, but it's a really fun level and it's kind of hard not to sing during it. So you'll see her run through this and avoid a majority of the enemies. And again, this is something that isn't as easy as she is going to make it look. So with the vultures, they have a chance to fly up. So you kind of have to account for that. You can either jump over them or jump on them, but you try not to let them hit you. She's done an absolute amazing job of not letting a single one of those attack her. This one she's about to do is a shortcut that is deceptively, well, she makes it look deceptively uh, easy, but it's deceptively difficult, rather. Um, that is something that is very, very easily missed. You can bounce on the vulture, the vulture can turn and attack you and make you fall, but that clip itself saves about five to five and a half seconds, so it's really, really nice to have it in a run, and really kind of sucks when it's missed, but it's very easy to miss. And here coming up, she's jumping over both of those hyenas to avoid having to hit either one of those. Again, something that she makes look incredibly easy, but the timing on that is actually very, very hard. You'll see here she's fighting a hyena. Surprise, it's actually two hyenas. What she did when she fell though is she did a small little jump and that stacks them up so it only looks like one. Then she has just one more to kill and she is already on her way out. Um, I will explain some more things about the jumps in this game which are gonna be super important for levels five and on but I think before I do that, we've got time for a couple donations. All right, that sounds awesome. We have $10 from Roxaloxa who says, can't afford to donate much, but I simply had to donate something toward the Lion Queen herself run. Been your friend for a million years and a million more to come. I'm so proud of you for what you've achieved. I'm forever in awe and jealous of your willpower and your drive. I wish you the best to come. Love you. Long live the queen. Thank you so much, Rox Alexa. We have $8 from Kajink who says, gotta donate $8 during AIDS run. Show Scar who's boss. Great way to end the week and a great marathon. We have $10 from Alice who says, good luck, eh? You're absolutely going to smash it. And $10 from Mo HLPC who says, fire it up, a L HLPC represent. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so we're just gonna quickly go over a couple things that are gonna pertain to the next levels, and that is Simba's jump height. So Simba has multiple different types of jumps he can do. It depends on how hard you push the button, how long you push the button. Um, he can do a horizontal jump, which is super tricky, which she will be utilizing. And we'll see that coming up soon. 
So right away, Exile is one of the most difficult levels in this entire run, and that's because there are boulders that fall from the sky. Now, they are RNG, but they do kind of base themselves on where you're standing at any point in the level. However, that is basically impossible to predict unless you were to stand in one place for a very long time. So what she just did there was a horizontal jump across that platform. Again, very, very difficult. It makes it so she doesn't have to a little, little rock between the two. The first thing she's going to go for here is called Exile 1. Exile 1 is where you take a small bit of damage and then you can clip right through that wall. It's very, very hard. You have to make sure that you're going a specific speed with Simba or else you will not be able to get it. Here, what she's doing is she's taking a damage boost to try to get through here and intentionally dying to try to show off this next clip. And that is called Exile 2, which again is another very precise clip that is uh, super, super difficult, but she's just going to try to show it off a couple more times here because it is pretty fun. And there it is. And that lets you clip right on through and get right to the end without having to deal with the rest of the level, which again is, is difficult because you have to jump on the different platforms, swing on the different platforms, and if you are swinging while a rock hits you, you are dead. And this brings us to Hakuna Matata, which has not one, but two bosses in it. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But right now what she's doing is she's going to be damaging to get up through these. She's going to be avoiding the spiders, and then she's going to be climbing up these very precisely. Now, it might seem like button smashing, but there's a certain amount of time that you can spend with clicking them each time you go to jump that saves time, and that is exactly what she's doing. She's going to jump down here and fall a very certain way to land on a certain platform to get you to the waterfall. There are about, I think, three different platforms you can choose to get to the waterfall. The one she took was the quickest. What she's doing is she's taking an intentional death there to try to show off fast waterfall. Um, if a Genesis has an in a, a tendency to eat inputs, like she mentioned before, and waterfall is one of the places that it is notorious for doing it. So rather than trying to catch back up, she's going to fall so she can show you the fast way to get up here. Now, if you played this game as a kid, it might have taken you forever to actually get up here. You'll see that she gets up there in absolutely no time at all. And that was technically what I like to call the first boss, is the waterfall boss, because it is a pain, especially on Genesis. The second being this monkey, and this monkey is very, very difficult because he can slap you right off the stage. The goal to this is try to get ahead of him before he gets ahead of you so that you can jump on him before he throws anything. And that's what she's doing right here, is she's getting ahead of him, jumping on him, letting him jump off, and again, getting back up. Once he throws his boulder, she's gonna hop up, and then she's going to jump on him, and then he's going to go over once more, and she's gonna hop on him again. You'll see her roll off the side, something that might seem like she's just doing it for fun, but in reality, it is to save some frames. That gorilla is a huge, huge pain, and it just, she makes very quick work of it. And now we are adult Simba. We've got things like more attacks. We can scratch, we can maul, we can throw, and we are going to all of those. Now, the normal way to do this level has jaguars coming out, and you have to kill each and every single one of them. And then Rafiki comes, and he takes his stick and clears the bramble. It's a long process. But what you can do is you can actually clip through each one of these if you roar at a very specific time. Now, on the SNES, you can roar right away, and there's no problems. You can roar and flip, but on the Genesis, it's a lot harder. You have to actually time it. You'll also see her swiping when she goes up on different cliffs. That's to try to make it so she doesn't hang. Hanging takes about one and a half to two seconds per hang, so any time you can skip them is a big time saver. And it's not as easy as she's making it look, much like the rest of this game. Uh, she has to do it differently for every single one that exists, and it's very, very hard. You'll see she killed that jaguar down there instead of just running up past it, and that's because this game is super, super precise. And of course, why wouldn't it roar at the jaguar below you instead of the one in front of you? So if you kill the one below you, you don't have to worry about that, and you can go ahead and perform the clip the same way you would any of the others. And that brings us to the final climb, which is where she's going to be swiping at these monkeys, getting them to knock down. You'll see her swipe so she doesn't have to hang on that one cliff over there. And again, this monkey is notoriously a jerk for throwing when you're trying to do boulder clip. And boulder jump is one of the hardest jumps in the game. It is super, super precise. It's one of those ones that once you get a feel for it, you know, but until then, it's like throwing yourself at it over and over. She gets it extraordinarily fast. What she's doing here is because each one of these clips will always take one damage from you, she's just killing the jaguars so that you can see what happens there. And you see out, and then she is on to the next level. Now, this is level eight. It sucked as a kid, but we are going to let you in on a little secret regarding this awful, awful level. Uh, you can skip the entire thing. 
Typically, you'd have to go through and find things that are, you have to fight jaguars, you have to fight hyenas, you have to dodge lava and all sorts of bats. It's awful, but you can completely skip it. And I believe we have about uh, probably 30 to 45 seconds if you want to get in another donation. Sounds awesome. And I love the commentary. <laughs> I have eighteen dollars uh, from Takate who says, "Eight, you always deliver the bigger wow. Have fun and go get Skyline Queen." We have eight dollars from from Supersonic who says, "Showing some love for my homegirl. Eight, you got this, girl." We have twenty-five dollars from Ragnar who says, "I've always wondered how this game ends. Thanks for expertly showing us a runner's choice for incentives, and thank you to the wonderful tech crew and mods for keeping everything running and cozy." Also, I am the greatest donation reader ever. Oh my gosh, the mecca! And the comment it totally didn't say that. I'm only saying this on my own, really. And twenty-five dollars from Angry Langs that says, "Go eight, go." And real quick, one last one, $25 from Salen, who says, I don't think I ever beat the Lion King as a kid. So cool to see eight running it again for Fleet Fatal and making it look so easy. Thanks to everyone involved with this event and good luck to the runners. Let's raise some more money for a good cause. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And she does make it look super easy. It's worth mentioning, she's actually the world record holder in both the normal and the difficult category and also the world record holder for easy percent on the console. I mentioned that because a emulator fusion is actually two seconds faster than console, which has been something that they've been extensively testing lately. Now this level is just full of hyenas, shocked to the brim, just full of hyenas, and you have to kill them all. You can't go through the next level without killing all the hyenas in the current one. Each hyena takes five swipes to kill, and you'll say, but Nicole, it looks like she's just doing one attack. Well, I'm here to tell you that she's doing actually five. The amount of times that she's pushing the button makes it look like one single attack, but it is not. What she just did here by killing the one hyena and then jumping over the other one and facing her body towards the left means that when she killed it, it pushed her off towards the left. That pushed her closer to the door that she had to be in and it was very intentional and very hard to pull off. Reason being is that hyena likes to jump and uh, cause a whole lot of problems if you don't do it just the way she did it. Now this hyena will jump down and she'll kill this and then she can climb up and go out the next door. And then the next room there is something called three stack and that's where we kill the second hyena and then we let the other three stack up and that is by, again, positioning yourself in a very specific place. You'll see all three stack up. Again, she can kill all three at once with one attack that is actually five attacks. Now level 10, we are onto the final level already. We've got Scar here, and Scar has three total phases. Each phase requires a different amount of attacks to go through. So the first one, he believes it takes uh, two five swipes. The next one is three, and the final one is four. Now she's going for a task strategy which is going to be, uh, she's going to be doing a certain way of jumping through these levels to get to certain places. And that's something that she's been running and trying and it's absolutely amazing to see it pull off. You'll see she just flips, flips, flips and is all the way right over. And she can all the way go up here. You can completely skip that third ledge. You'll see her swipe to get over both of those hyenas and then avoid the fire by jumping on the left side of that platform. Again, like I said before, there's a lot of things that go into it that you would not even know are intentional. Jumping on the left side of that one platform up is. What you'll see her do too is she jumps on Scar's butt, which is what we like to call the uh, you know butt trick. Um, and that's because when you jump on that, it kind of lets you get two full sets of attacks in when you should only be able to do one because when he pushes you off, you're still technically on him. And that is very, very hard to pull off and it's very hard to um, you know time yourself and get yourself lined up for that. So really she just has one more and time is gonna be on flip. So that should be when he starts panting and that should be time. Time, I guess. Wow. Okay. GG. Oh my gosh, that was like my nightmare. That was really um. That was really a meme. <laughs> you mean the laggy as heck meme level meme too? <laughs> At least it was more relaxing than running it on difficult either way. Like, regardless of the fact that, that was, like, the worst run that I've had in a super long time, it's still a lot less stressful than running it on difficult, because that's crazy. Well, and chat was absolutely astonished by how quickly you got through this game, by the way. <laughs> it oh, was wow. amazing to watch the reactions, yeah. That's kind of surprising to me, but I guess I shouldn't it's... be surprised, because, like, when you run a game, you know, you can tell 
all the little things that you're screwing up, but a casual viewer doesn't necessarily know that stuff. I mean, even to me, that was amazing. So I think you Aww. did really, really well. Thank you so much, Nicole. Of course. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Um, I just wanted to shout out the HLPC, the High Life Players Club. And thank you so much for having me, Frame Fatales. I really appreciate it. Can we get one last shout out for Aid here? And of course, commentary as well. Nicole, thank you very much for that lovely commentary. It just, I have to go back and watch that. That was so fast. All right, coming up next, folks, we have Donkey Kong Jungle Beat with Lori DeBunnikins. Very much looking forward to that. But first, a few more donations where I feel like eight, rightfully so, should be shout out here. We have $8 from Hypnotics that says, Go, eight, go. And we have $64 from Saber Messia, who says, eight, 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 just right across the screen there. I absolutely appreciate the enthusiasm there. Thank you. And we have $100 from Emma. No comment, but thank you very much for your donation. $100 from Lion Lenny, who says, Hi to everyone. Nice to see this awesome game. Good luck to the runners. And thank you for the great event. Greetings from Austria. Chino donates $25 saying, thank you all for having me. Can't wait to see the rest of this marathon. And with that, folks, speaking of the rest of the marathon, my time here is done. It has been an honor hosting for Fleet Fatal 2020. We will be right back with a break and we will have our next host, which I believe is Geek Ella. Take care, folks. Hi, I am Malala Yousafzai and I'm a girls' education activist. I know that for some of you, schools might not be open yet. While for some of you, they have reopened, but you are uncertain about going back to schools. But I want you to remember that nothing is more important for you than education, especially if you are a girl. Parents, teachers, and leaders, we know that 12 years of education for girls strengthens our families, communities, and countries. Please do everything you can to make sure all girls can re-enroll in school. Students, schools must be safe for you and your teachers. Remember to wear a mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands to protect yourself and everyone around you. Whether your school is open or not, I hope you will do whatever you can to keep learning. Even though it may have been many months since you have been to school, 
Don't lose hope and don't give up on your education. I know you have dreams and ambitions and I believe you can make this world a better place. It all begins with education. So go back to your school as soon as it's safe. Everybody, my name is Geekella, and I'm going to be your host for our next few runs where we have some awesome rhythm games and stuff coming up. Just wanted to remind everyone that we have an incentive for Lori to have a bongo camera while she's playing the run, and I really want to see that. So if you would like to see Lori have a bongo camera during Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, make sure to get some of those donations in. Also, we did hit $46,000 in donations, and that means we get bonus game four, Celeste Farewell tonight. So awesome job, everybody. We have a $5 donation from Morgan. It says, let's go bongo cam. We have a $25 donation from Maeve. We've made it to Friday, but can we make it to 50K? I think we can chat. Let's keep pushing for a good cause.